This video is brought to you by me. For $1 a month, you can support the channel directly and help me keep doing what I love. Thanks for watching and supporting. Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead is a holiday celebrated in Mexico and in communities of people who share Mexican descent. Instead of the spooky, scary haunts and frights of Halloween, Dia de los Muertos instead celebrates the lives of people who have passed, welcoming their spirits back into their homes through altars containing the deceased's favorite foods and beverages. There's dancing and celebration for the return of loved ones, and people dress up as skeletons and decorate with calaveras as a nod to death. It's important to have at least a surface-level understanding of Dia de los Muertos in order to truly appreciate Grim Fandango, the 1998 LucasArts adventure game. It weaves a tale through the afterlife in the land of the dead, or the place souls appear after their human bodies have perished. Like Dia de los Muertos, death isn't portrayed in a scary way, but rather as a transitional phase to the great beyond, or in the game's case, the land of eternal rest. Through a combination of witty writing, beautiful pre-rendered environments, and a memorable labyrinth of puzzles, Grim Fandango makes dying feel more like a vacation through another phase of life than the end of the road. Emmanuel or Manny Calavera is the Grim Reaper. Well, he's a Grim Reaper. You see, in the Land of the Dead, there are many Grim Reapers who work for the Department of Death. Instead of robbing souls, these Reapers work as travel agents. Manny is one of these workers who travels from the Land of the Dead to the Land of the Living to greet people who have died. The recently deceased have appointments with the Grim Reapers in the DoD where they evaluate their life not for how much money they made, but rather the quality of who they were. Depending on how good they are, they qualify for travel packages to the land of eternal rest. The best of the best people get a first class ticket on the double N line straight to paradise. The less saintly of us get a beautiful wood walking stick with a very helpful compass on the top that will accompany them for the four year long on foot pilgrimage to eternal rest. I'm here to reclaim that walking stick. I broke it over the head of some hideous monsters in the forest. For many who get the short end of the stick, pun intended, they lose faith in ever making it to the end of the journey and settle for day jobs in the land of the dead. Manny is in a tough spot. Before he can set forth on his road to rest, he has to work off a debt for actions he does not remember doing in his previous life. He works as a reaper to pay off this debt, but he keeps getting stuck with low-tier clients who only qualify for the walking stick package while his sleazy co-worker Domino Hurley siphons all the good clients for himself. On one day of the dead, Manny decides he has finally had enough. After getting sabotaged by Domino on what should have been an easy win, a food poisoning outbreak, Manny steals a client of his own. Through a chaotic series of events that involves Manny deliberately putting the message delivery system in the DoD out of commission using package insulation, he manages to steal the file of one Miss Mercedes Meche Colomar. She is an outstanding citizen who has not a single blemish on her record. In spite of that, the computer system still says she only qualifies for the walking stick package. Did you kill much when you were alive? Very little. Never killed anybody? I have to confess, I never killed anybody. Not even a teensy bit of killing? Maybe I just wasn't trying hard enough. Before Manny can work out what happened with his hot-headed boss, Don Copal, Meche takes off, eager to get the four-year walk over with. The onus to make things right falls on Manny as he blames himself for subjecting Meche to a travel package she didn't deserve. Along with his demon driver slash vinyl flame enthusiast Glottis, Manny jets off after Meche to make things right, unknowingly beginning his own pilgrimage to the land of eternal rest. The game takes place over four consecutive days of the dead as we chase Meche through the different regions of the land of the dead. However, Manny is not solely to blame for Meche's poor life valuation. Manny accidentally opens a can of worms of a conspiracy that goes all the way to the top of the Department of Death. Hurley and Copal are working together to steal all of the double end tickets from deserving people to auction off to the high bidders, essentially selling them on the idea of skipping their purgatory to go straight to the ending. The two of them, along with the crime boss Hector Lamont, are trying to sell paradise to the wealthy in order to make the land of the dead their own kingdom of wealth and power. Along with Manny's journey, we see him join a rebel alliance who is trying to take down the Department of Death in order to end the deed to Le Mans and his cronies, all the while never taking his eyes off his main goal, saving Meche from as much struggle as possible to give her a ticket to the train. 
Manny miscalculates how much time he will save with Gladys and his custom hot rod the Bone Wagon, and gets to the first town along the journey well before Meche does, meaning he has time to kill before she gets there. In the year he spends waiting in Rubicava, he opens and operates an underground gambling bar and pays off the police chief to stay in business, straight out of an underworld version of Casablanca. When Meche finally arrives, her visit is short-lived as she is kidnapped by Domino, and after failing to get on the boat where she is trapped, Manny decides his only way to chase the ship is to board a Union ship that is departing first thing the next day. Wrecking that message sorter was just the beginning. To gain entry to the boat, you have to bargain with a counterfeit ID maker to give you a Union worker pass so you can take the open spot on the ship. He will do it on one condition. Retrieve his briefcase full of money that is being stored in a vault at the racetrack nearby. To get the briefcase, you have to get into the VIP lounge, get Gladys in too, get him to indulge in his penchant for alcohol, and chug an entire keg of wine after locking a waiter in a closet so you can climb into the empty keg and get brought into the storage room. That is a mouthful. If that sounds like a lot to balance, you'd be right. In classic adventure game fashion, you can get caught in a loop of not knowing what to do and trying every item with every interactable person and object just to get something new to happen. The most brutal part of this game was knowing what I had to do, but not standing in the exact perfect location to get Manny to do the thing that I wanted him to do. Still, if you do get stuck for too long, ample amounts of guides are still available online to get you moving again. And it's absolutely worth using a guide to experience this game for the writing and the cast of characters brought to life by an amazing voice cast. Even minor characters are memorable for their one-liners and actions. One of the funniest characters in the game is the clown in the Day of the Dead parade who really hates Manny for bothering him. When Manny presses him on what kind of balloon shapes he can create, well, just see for yourself. Bet you can't do a cat. Shows what you know, buddy. I can do anything. I can do birds, amphibians, famous poets. Go ahead, name one. Robert Frost. Trying to stump me, eh? Ta-da! This doesn't look anything like Robert Frost. This game is full of that snarky writing and jokes at Manny's expense. Playing Grim Fandango makes it clear why Tim Schafer wanted to get the rights for the game after LucasArts closed during the Disney acquisition. There is so much love and soul put into it. Even though this game came out almost 25 years ago, the remake for consoles and PC was a major labor of love. And if you want to see how the game was pieced back together and modernized, there's an entire documentary series on the Double Fine channel on YouTube about what it meant to the team to get the rights back and bring Manny to modern consoles. It even goes back into the thought process of how the game was made, for instance, with how interactable items don't glow, but rather Manny looks at stuff you can pick up and do things with, and how likely the game would never exist without the action-adventure biker game Full Throttle, because it gave Schaefer clout in the industry to work on projects he cared about. There is even a two-hour director commentary you can play over the game as you play that explains design elements and mechanics and puzzles. While I was doing research into this game, I found the voice cast reunion from E3 2015, where all the actors read scenes while the original score was played behind them live. You could tell the whole cast still cares about this project and all the characters they vividly brought to life. Grim Fandango is, in some cases, a product of its time with how vague some of the puzzles can be. However, it has a world, atmosphere, and cast of characters richer than many games released even today. It hangs on to the idea and faith that moving through the game's story is so much more important than where it all ends up, and it's just a beautiful experience throughout. Thank you so much for watching my video, I really appreciate it. Did you play Grim Fandango? Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. If you want more videos like this, subscribe and hit the bell to make sure you never miss an upload. If you want to support the channel, consider sending this video to someone who would appreciate it. And if you want to directly support, consider going to my Patreon link in the description below, or check out my merch. I'd like to thank my higher tier patrons, Just Jessica, Okayla, 8BitJesus, Andrew Elmore, Andrew Lang, Andrew Donahoe, and Kudahori. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.